to Jeffrey. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, are we rolling? Wow, I love it. A fan just asked for an autograph. That is so cool. Hold it. On today's Behind the Velvet Ropes, we are going to go downtown, uptown, and all around town. So stay tuned, because it is a mobile show. I love it. <laughs> Hurry up and go put something on. Look good. You need okay. different shoes though. Yeah, I know. I know. What shoes? Do you... She stole some merchandise. I like it. <laughs> Today, our first stop is going to be in Funky Soho. We're at Grand and Green Streets. Whoa, is it noisy or what? We're going to meet Rodney Telford, who makes some of the most beautiful suits around. So let's meet him. Ding dong. Today, I'm doing a bell thing. Anybody home? Want to see some clothes? Hello? Bill's not working. Door's open, like, duh. Oh my god. Hey. hey. Hi, I How are you? There's like Good. no security. I just like, oh, I'm dinging, and the door was we'll open. Be here. We'll be here. Come on, man. Oh, I love your store. Very nice. Look, I like that. I need that. What size is that? Uh, that's a size six. My size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so come sit. Let's chit chat. Okay. Come closer. He's scared of me. Uh, Don't be scared. So it's really funny. I read in your press kit. I read all the information that you started at the age of thirteen and you changed your school uniform. You tried to make yourself look yeah, a little I'm hipper. Little bit, yeah. So you took the pants in. Narrowed the pants and narrowed the ties and. Uh, yeah. So you were always a detail oriented, even as a little kid, a little youngin. Yeah. because you don't have a fashion show. You know, you kind of do your own thing. For the most part, we've been very lucky with the type of people coming in here. And uh, it's been very good because they've all come back. You don't work with seasons in the, the way everybody else does. If a customer comes in here and she loves her fall suit, she can order the same suit in a lightweight fabric. Sure, sure, we do a lot of that. We do, I mean, provided we know it's going to work, we'll do, yeah, any, we'll do light fabrics, uh, heavier fabrics if they're wanting it for fall. Now, I hear that you make your own patterns. Is this true? Because that's tough. People lie, they say they do, but they really don't. Yeah. Your wife told me that. Yeah, well, it's true. I am the pattern maker. So you do, every, you're like totally hands on. Do you ever get tired of doing everything? Don't you want to get well, a pattern Well, I guess maker? I do. No, the, the, I mean, that part of it's what I love. Most people don't love that. They want to get away from that. They want to do the sketches and be out there and be seen or whatever. This you don't sell to stores. This is like one of a kind, right. you know, your customers. But you have a line now that right. you will be selling to right. stores. Uh, I've just gotten together with uh, an old assistant of mine. It's going to be called Operator 7. Uh, the newer line I want to make a little younger and experiment with things that are a little younger and of course uh, making it younger means it needs to be a little less expensive. And you can have the same quality though. The quality with me is always 
imperative to do as well. well She's as leaving. Possible. You're leaving, so you. Bye bye. 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 This, her customer's leaving without her coat. I guess you're gonna take it in. Yeah, we're gonna right. do something. He's gonna fix up that coat. I guess we'll just let you have to go back and like just and fix, fix her, it. Fix her coat. <laughs> well, thank you, Rodney Tolbert. All right. Thanks. Wow, that was so cool. We're leaving Rodney, and now we're going to Robert Dane to make some of the most beautiful evening wear. So today is pretty, pretty, pretty. We're gonna walk. Hopefully I won't get run over. There's like a very cool new store if you're getting married. They have some of the coolest wedding gowns works at. Very hip. Soho's very hip. Is this a photo shoot? It's a photo shoot, I love it. Makeup, I need some makeup. <laughs> So you never know what you're gonna find in Soho. Everybody's working hard, look at this. I don't know, what is that stuff? Ooh, there's an iron work, particular iron work. We're here. I love bells. Actually, it's open. Just gonna let them know that we're here, so. Yeah, we're coming up. Danes, to be. To be or not to be. Is that not Shakespeare? Ooh, chic people. Gallery, another gallery. There's Robert. All right, two, funky. Oh, here we are. Hey. Hi. How are How you? Are you? Great. Ooh, Great. look. Dresses. That's Rachel, Robert's wife. Hey. All the wives are around today. I love that. Hey. Hey. Good to see you. Everybody's getting married. I love that. President. Pre President what? Of the company. You, excuse me. <laughs> okay, excuse me. <laughs> Selling all these dresses and your your pants are frayed. <laughs> They're worn. You got that downtown designer grungy funky look. Well, we're downtown. I, you know, it's like I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to look like somebody uptown. You are downtown, and you're in the coolest building. Like there's, it's art galleries. So. It's great, and it's funny because the people who come see the galleries, I mean, like end up wandering in here, and they can kind of see it. I mean, it's about design. It's not really so much fashion. It's more like design, and they can, you know, there's a. It's not art, but. It, you know, there's that kind of correlation there. You just blew my first question. It was going to be like, do you consider yourself an artist? You're in this building, and now you're like, oh, they're all moving to Chelsea, <laughs> and it's not art. Fashion is art. Yeah, Your fashion you know, is fashion art. is design, and I, I really do think it's like it's a little bit different. I mean, it, art is about something which is you know not usable. It's just art. It just it is. And fashion or design, which is really more about what this is, is about you know both that artistic sense, the aesthetic, but also something which you know can be used. I mean, it's no good if a woman can't wear it. You've been getting a lot of press now. I see a lot of your dresses on celebrities and working it. And working it. It's taken a while. It's a hard thing. I mean, it's a you know, it's an incredibly competitive field, um, and we're competing at kind of the highest levels. I mean, we're competing against the big guys and in Europe and the big guys here and so you know it's, it's not it's not easy You know, we the store's been buying evening, and so we, you know, definitely we have that and everything. But we're doing more and more kinds of things, which are, you know, not necessarily for work so much, but just kind of, you know, for all kinds of different times. Tuesday, going out to the Odeon, you know, that kind of thing. You know, and you can wear it during the day. I mean, you see girls all the time in the East Village, you know, wandering around in chiffon or satin is not necessarily an evening fabric anymore. I mean, you know, they're all they're all these kind of the rules have been broken so broken down so much that you have the ability to. You know, wear what you want. You know, I think in a way, it's great to have all this freedom and everything, but you know, most women have very busy lives. They need to be concentrating on other things, and I think they're looking for more guidance from designers. I mean, they're looking for somebody to pull trends together. They're looking for editors. Your clothing 
It's very architectural looking. Architecture is thought of as being very kind of Mies van der Rohe, straight squares, you know, rectangles and everything, but it can also be completely curved. Um, and so when I think of like the woman's body, I mean, it's about architecture, but it's not about squares. It's not about sharp angles. It's about soft curves. Um, it's still architectural. And you know, since I studied architecture at school, I mean, that's kind of where I've come into it. Wow. How'd you go from architecture to dresses? Grandmother you know, like taught me how to sew. Oh, <laughs> grandma. Like, grandma's like a troublemaker. Little, grandma's a troublemaker. I mean, it's like this light went off. I mean, it's like I've never, I've never done anything where, you, you know, you just kind of in half an hour you knew that this was for me. I, I mean, I just knew it. This is what I wanted to do. You're doing bridal now, too. Yeah. Tell me about fun. that. Everyone's getting married, but how do you make money doing, doing bridal? Because supposedly you get married once and you wear one dress, but this well, does that, not seem to be the case. I, you know, actually, all of our brides have been first, first time. They're, like, they're really cool. They're like these great women who are like, they're mostly in their 30s. They're designers. They're architects, cooks. Um, but, you know, we haven't done the second bride yet. Uh, well, I mean, I'm kind of like, I mean, I get really upset. It's like, this is, this is one. You know, this is the one thing. I mean, I'm totally, you know, it's like marriage is a one-time deal. You don't like it. Uh, listen, very old-fashioned, South listen, Texas. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm old-fashioned. This is, I'm going to work on number two. So, you know what, if I find the man, you can make the dress. You'll be here. We'll is that a deal? We'll figure that out, definitely. Deal. Thank you, Robert Dane. Do you guys want to look good for the future? Of course you do. That's why you need L'Oreal Future E Moisturizer. Makes you look fresh and exciting with all that vitamin E. And you're worth it, aren't you? Shoes and tootsies. It's all about feet today. We are now going to meet Nancy Geis of Zeitgeist Shoes. She's cool, she's hip, and we're going to check out her new line. So, taxi! I am now with Nancy Geist of Nancy Nancy, Nancy Zeitgeist, no Nancy Geist, Nancy... <laughs> yes, for the Wait, last five years. You are Nancy yeah. Geist, your company was called Zeitgeist, but Correct. now it's Nancy Nancy and Nancy Geist. The new couture line, Nancy Geist. And my friends have been asking me for years why I don't make shoes with my own name in it. I've been sort of saving my name for the last five years to do things that only I want to wear. Zeitgeist was about having the right thing at the right moment and commercial, you know, the, the but, commerciality of it. But these Nancy, are commercial. Nancy Geist is... I'm glad you think so. They're but, beautiful. What's not commercial? I mean, who wouldn't wear this beautiful shoe? For the most part, in, in the history of expensive shoes, flats haven't been a big seller. I mean, Manolo and Gucci, they get away with you know, five inch heels and what the Nancy Geist line is about is about everyday luxury. A lot of times you think, oh, well, you know, I'll just slip on a pair of these cheap things. I'm just going out. Why not spend $400 on a shoe you're going to wear every day in just the same level as, you know, the best, the best you can have. I mean, for my life, I just go down to the, you know, the corner for dinner but I don't really want to throw on my, you know, flip-flops or my, you know, these guys, <laughs> my, I shouldn't even Some say. Some nasty old, funky old, ratty shoes. eaten <laughs> shoes that she left and out I in said, her garden. You know, if I'm going to be a famous shoe designer, I really have to look a little nicer, so. <laughs> yeah, that's like important, yes, I agree with that. You gave up a pre-med career. Yes. How did you go from, from Dr. Nancy to Shoe Dr. Nancy? Well, that was probably really it. I worked in a hospital for three years. That's it, or three summers. Now, what's the difference between Nancy Geist and Nancy Nancy? There's a little bit more value-oriented. I still work very sculpturally. Um, Good fabrics. Excellent fabrications. This is like the best, like super soft patent you can get, metallic patent. When you go to a store sometimes, a lot of a lot of women will go, oh, I need a pair of black slacks. I need a new moccasin. They don't want to say, oh, I think I need two rosebuds on <laughs> a, a little skimmer that has an unusual teardrop toe. The Nancy Nancy lines for someone who says, I need a new loafer, I need a new skimmer, I need a beautiful pump. You sort of like know that they'll fill that void instantly. Do you think that being a woman, designing for women, is, is a help? I 
It's a help and a hindrance. I mean, sometimes I can get done drawing all these fabulous pictures. And sometimes after I get done making all these cool little sculptural things, the gang here will say, well, Nancy, these are darling, but where are the black flats? You know, sometimes you forget things. Now, I love that you also designed for Cynthia Rowley. She uh -huh. is so fun. We love yeah. Cynthia. How does that, how do you um, work that? Like, do you ever argue? Like, <laughs> yeah. Cynthia, but... <laughs> you gotta have this. And she's like, well, you know. How does that she's, work? She's pretty good about that. We, we being both being from the Midwest, we like balance each other out on that. She'll say, Nancy, I don't, you know, I don't really, don't tell me about the flats, because she's totally unflat person. Mm -hmm. She loves high heels. She loves, um, things that look really sexy. Have you gone to, through some epiphany? It seems like all of a sudden it's all about me. I want to do this shoot. I don't care who buys it. I want this space. I don't care who comes here. What happened? I think it's a, it's a design maturity. I mean, my ego's finally getting to the point where I can, I can actually say that with a straight face. That, you know, if no one buys it, it's their problem. I like that attitude. You know, it's, the ex response I got in Milan was fabulous. They really responded to a woman's sensibility, which gave me even more, like, you know, strength. Because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of nuts and bolts to get the shoes produced. I mean, it's not just doing the picture and making the sample. There's, a as you know, there's a slew of everything else to do. So, what, so tell me about this table. It's like the sickest table I've ever seen. That is really My sick. My dad made that for me. This is what happens after you've been a doctor, yeah. Well, he's a doctor and he's retired. That's retired. what happened. And this is what happened. So I figured before I got to that point, I would just start without, skip the doctor part and just make weird stuff. So it's, that's <laughs> that weird, all right. Total, you know. Thank you. That's Thank you, Nancy thing. Geist. You're welcome. It's Thank you. GIST. Go shopping. Buy some shoes. <laughs> you need them. I am loving that Nancy guys. Now, where is the chicest place to get a dog or bring your dog if he needs treatment? Not a salon, the Humane Society. That's right, so follow us. I made Dr. Julie Morris turn off the, what tape was that? It was like this Ocean. There was an ocean sounds of nature. <laughs> it's so. like a very swanky place. <laughs> yeah, we do that to make the environment in here nice and calming and soothing. In fact, this space, this room, was created by the Humane Society so we could do acupuncture and holistic type of consults. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's out of the way of the craziness of downstairs because it's a very, very busy clinic and there's a lot of activity going on and when you do things like acupuncture, you want it to be calm and soothing. You don't want barking dogs and people barging through, so this space is out of the way. Well, when I first got my dogs like 10 years ago, no one ever did acupuncture on people, nevertheless dogs. Like, why have you decided to, to work with animals and do this to them? Well, because it's, a, it's another healing modality that's very gradual and very wonderful because it's very balancing. With acupuncture, you're not just focusing on, like, if you take Advil, where you'll just mask the symptoms. You're not healing the injury. So with things like acupuncture, you actually can heal. We have a lucky candidate today. Actually, his name is Lucky Freeway. Right. And these are his... his these actually, are he has his own x-rays. These are little feet. Now, what's wrong with Lucky? This is a normal wrist in here. And this is his bad wrist. It's not like there are any obvious broken bones, it's just that all those little wrist bones got shoved out of alignment. Lucky, come on in. He sees the camera, he's camera shy. He's just like some of the designers we have on. They're like, please, no photos. Hi, Lucky. Usually we, a lot of us will put one in the top of the head, and this is called GV20, and it's a calming point. Sometimes it just helps to take the edge off any nervousness that a dog may have. Out of the way. Okay, let can go down. Good. There you go. So you don't, they don't feel these really. They may feel a little pinch. And what often happens is they'll get sleepy. Okay, the needle stay for a few minutes. Sometimes dogs will just lie down, and it's because you get this endorphin release, like the runner's high, and it makes them feel good. That's the best part. You know, you've got a really good thing going when they fall asleep on you. Look, he's sleeping. It's working. Yeah. You know, and how long? How long will this be effective? With Lucky, he's always going to have a problem with the wrist, but he's feeling a lot better because of the treatments. Oh. Well, thank you, doctor. And you're lucky. Welcome. Lucky Freeway, you're a very lucky dog. <laughs> Aren't you? Just he's over me. <laughs> very cute. Thanks, Lucky. 
a lot of people just think that you come here, you drop off an animal if you if you can't take care of it, mm -hmm. or you can adopt one. But you do so many more things, in, including veterinary services. Oh yeah, we try to meet their emotional as well as physical needs, so that this way they you know they go to happy you know homes where they've already had some training. We try to housebreak them. We, have, we treat animals for everything. We do surgery, as you know, spay and neuter because you brought your dog here to be neutered, which is very good. Gomez and Fuji. Gomez and Fuji are much healthier when they're neutered and much happier. Mm -hmm. It seems like everybody's coming to the Humane Society all of a sudden. Well, I think a lot of people come here because they know they can trust us, that we're here. Our vets are really great doctors, and they want to make a difference for all of the animals that come to the Humane Society of New York. They want to make sure that even if they're not an animal for adoption and they're someone's pet, that it's their beloved pet. Mm -hmm. It's like their best friend in the world. And what better friend can you have than Gomez? None <laughs> at all. There is no better friend than Gomez. He listens to me whine, complain. He deals with my, like, you know, bad attitude need many I days. Say more? No, you need not. Because <laughs> we know. Now, who is this little gray fat cat? This is Estelle. Estelle is still um, running around. They get to run around all day long. At night, they have to go in and go to sleep. She likes me. Yeah. Estelle, hi. <laughs> she looks like she ate one of my chihuahuas. <laughs> She's a big girl. You don't put any animals to sleep? No, we're what's called a no-kill shelter. We don't put animals to sleep unless they're terminally ill. Um, only we don't want an animal to suffer. That's our bottom line. We would never want an animal to suffer. Look at her. Yeah, she's very cute. She's, she's a very friendly kitty cat. It's Jezebel. Isn't she cute? Jezebel's real pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Jezebel is frisky. Look at her. <laughs> she's going to eat Michael. What's he saying? Murphy! He's got his little raincoat on, place ready for his walk. Murphy's very good looking. He's so handsome, isn't he? So basically, to get an animal here, it's free. Also, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Right, well, there's an adoption donation that helps because we want people to realize that the animal has a value. Mm -hmm. So if we just give it to them, then they think, oh, it's valueless. So there's an adoption donation. So you take them out every day? Every day they go out in groups of three or four to, to eight cats. And at night they stay out. There's three or four of them every night. We rotate them and we call it Cats Night Out. They get to stay in the back and hang out all night. Mm -hmm. Boogie down. Did she pick this Jeffrey Bean sweater out? She did. She picked it out herself and Jeffrey was so kind to knit it for us. She'll either go home in this, which is you can put on, you can take on the airlines, or she'll go home in a very hot yeah. weather, towed around town. This is definitely very fashiony. Patent leather, ooh. Little bomber jackets. Maybe ooh, where's my airplane? I'm Where? going flying today. <laughs> She's so cute. The babushka Susan. <laughs> oh, I'm from old country. <laughs> Help me. Yeah, we're like torturing her today. <laughs> Poor Jolie. Oh, She's like. The I know. I'm so, uh, it is the humane. I know. But like, I'll wear that. Well, Murphy yeah. might wear something. Might wear that. Here, you can put that on Murphy. <laughs> oh, it fits him too. <laughs> Hey, hi, oh, hello, love these guys, wow, love dogs, hope you like that Humane Society, oh, look at it, how sweet is that, we're now going to go look from the puppy to the jewelry, some of the best jewelry in town by designer Mish, but I don't know, I can't leave this one, okay, okay, hi sweetie, oh, you are sweet, want to come see some jewelry, guess not, she has enough, She's a Madison Avenue dog. Oh, puppies, more puppies. Oh, look, look. Bye. Oh, Mish. Hey. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. Wow, I'm loving this space. Come on in. Ooh, glamour. Ooh. What made you decide to open up your own little shop in a building that there are other small mom and pop shops. I think there's a, a large amount of clients that are completely tired of going to big stores, all which have the same merchandise, and really sort of most likely speak with someone who doesn't know in depth the area in which they're selling. I mean, you come here 
we make the jewelry here, we put it together here. If you wanted a special length, we can do that for you almost instantaneously. Sophisticated women love to have the option of having exactly what they want, which you can't really get in a big store. Now, you are actually working at Sotheby's. I heard that you actually started that way, that you made jewelry, and at 12 o'clock lunchtime, you would lay out your wares, and all the girls would come over and like snatch everything. That is totally true. I started doing jewelry as a hobby and I thought, I don't know if anyone would actually like it, so I would bring it to Sotheby's and occasionally take a piece out of my drawer and then suddenly they had all their girlfriends coming and their mothers coming and it developed into a business. I read that you said that your goal was to make tre modern treasures. Or a, a, that sounds like I might have said that. <laughs> did you not? Am I lying? You never lie. A, yes, I do occasionally, but don't tell anybody. So, no, but, no, no that, that's very true. I mean, I like to make something that will always be considered beautiful, regardless of if it's today or 50 years from now. And it makes you smile because there's something beautiful and whimsical about it. I want to look around. I want sure, to me show you. Show me what's in this, this case. It's wonderful. Ooh. Um, that is wonderful. That is a faceted amethyst lariat. This is really kind of fabulous. Isn't that great? I think it's you, Lauren. It's me. I'm loving these earrings in here. Thank you. These are bamboo around the outside. And this is um, lime citrine, which is a great green colored stone, a little more unusual. Are these gold? Yeah, 18 karat. Beautiful. How Thank much you. would this sell for? Probably a, around $3,000. That is a faceted green onyx, which is a great stone. It's an unusual kind of stone because onyx is typically black. Uh, but it holds its color even better than emerald. So everyone comes in and they're like, oh my God, those are the most beautiful emeralds I've ever seen. But the clasp is actually um, emerald and 18 karat. <gasps> oh, I have to try these on. This is me. It's big, it's massive, and it makes a statement. I love these pigs. They're the cutest. It's so funny. when I first made the models for those. Everyone in my office told me I was out of my mind. In fact, they wanted to institutionalize me. But we've sold so many pigs, it's amazing. This is totally beautiful, the aquamarine necklace, too. Wow, we have more pearls. We have a, a nice, beautiful aquamarine. Very oh, it's so beautiful. I love that. You look good color. in blue. The color is beautiful. And here's some faceted amethyst, which is actually very beautiful. Wow. You look great buried with trays, Lauren. I do. I want <laughs> all of this. Here's peanut pearls because of the shape, which they're so great. And rice pearls. So all the different shapes are just great. Thank you so much, Mish. Thank you so much for coming. You gonna promise to come back? I'm coming back. Did you have a good time today? I had a great time. This was a really great show. Thanks for joining me this week on Behind the Velvet Ropes and come back next week for more fashion, style, beauty, and glamour. And thanks L'Oreal for making me so pretty.